So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rob Hunter here again and today another question and today uh, the question is about staining. It's a short question but I think the answer might be a little bit longer here. Here we go. I'm, new, I'm very new to microscopy so it might be a silly question. How do you get color on your slides? Is it natural? I don't get that at all. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the question. I can assure you it is not a silly question. It refers to staining and that is a huge topic. And uh, yeah, maybe we're gonna st simply start off uh, with an example here in the background. This is the cross section of a pine flower. It's a commercially prepared uh, microscope slide, which uh, I put here on the microscope and over the camera, it goes into the computer and then on the monitor. And you can already see over here that there are different colors, red, primarily red and blue. And the question now is, is now how do we get those colors um, on, um, yeah, on the slide? In this case, this is a so-called a stained slide. It's a commercially prepared slide where the company used different stains and chemicals to stain the specimen and different stains have different chemical properties and therefore they will also react with different parts uh, of the specimen and uh, it will basically stain them this way. For example, there is a stain called Nile Red which likes to stain lipids, fats. Okay, And then there are other stains that like to stain primarily uh, DNA, for example. Methylene blue would be such an example. And there are a range, a large range of different chemicals that can be used to um, prepare your specimens to get uh, yeah, color on your microscope slide. Now the thing however is the following and that's maybe one of the disadvantages of using chemical stains is that the specimen will be dead. It has to be dead because it has to be um, completely uh, processed chemically. Um, it has to be in many cases also dehydrated. Water has to be removed to make it stable and uh, so that you are also able to make a permanent slide. And this basically means that you're not able to live movement or living objects because the chemical treatment has naturally killed off everything. And that's the whole point. Uh, you don't even want it to be alive because I want the slide to be yeah, stable and so that you can store it for a very long time. Yeah, and some of the slides that are out there that have been made already a hundred years ago and are still usable and useful. So for long-term preservation, um, yeah, chemical treatment and staining might be, a, may, might be a necessity. Now, however, many specimens um, cannot be stained or you do not want to stain them because um, they should sh be presented in their natural colors. Now, um, here we are a little bit reduced already because many specimens in nature are either colorless, they're transparent, um, or uh, for example, the, even though they are pigmented, they might have a color, maybe the color is so faint that you're not able to see the color well under the microscope. Um, so in this case, um, yeah, it might look less intensive the color um, under the microscope than in real life. I'll give you an example for uh, the typical one is blood. If you put a drop of blood um, on a microscope slide, it looks very red, but under the microscope, it does not really look very red at all because uh, the light is of the microscope is so strong that uh, essentially it will yeah, be almost, uh, yeah, it will let the light through the red blood cells and it, they would, they're almost become transparent. Um, at this light intensity. Yeah, so this basically means that yes, some specimens have a natural color, uh, but you don't see it under the microscope, or at least not to the extent, because simply of the op the way that the optics and the system works, and because it's such a thin layer, um, yeah, you, the colors are lost. Yeah. Um, in some cases, the color is visible quite well, and for example, the green chloroplast of algae, for example, or of plants, very often um, are very is very strong, and you do not need staining for that because you can see that naturally. However, um, what happens if you want to look at a live specimen and um, yeah, you are not able to stain it because that would kill the specimen um, and uh, you would like to observe the natural colors of the specimen but the problem is, is that the natural colors are simply too weak. In this case, uh, there is in microscopy a possibility called optical staining. And in optical staining, you're artificially introducing colors and or contrast to the image without the addition of chemicals. And how do you do that? Well, for example, one way would be is, is to use uh, those filters. So this is known as a so-called a, um, a patch stop filter. There are different kinds. This one I, I 3D printed myself, but you can also make them yourself using cardboard um, and some, some, uh, some markers. Over here, I've got another one here. This is a so-called a dark field patch stop, uh, which completely blocks out uh, the light in the center. And uh, those uh, filters and patch stops um, are able to introduce artificial 
colors. Um, and uh, to make the image a little bit more, let's put it beautiful to look at, because it's also sometimes important, especially when you want to make YouTube videos like I'm uh, making them, then um, yeah, it's not only about the scientific uh, information content, but it also should look nice and, and, and colorful. And that's why um, yeah, you can also use those uh, filters, um, in many cases homemade, um, to um, artificially introduce colors. Now, sometimes uh, people don't like that because they say, well, that's kind of changing the way around that nature looks like. Because in reality, it's, it's not blue. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a question of taste. Um, it depends really what you want to do. And uh, these optical staining techniques sometimes indeed make structures visible that were very difficult, if not impossible, to see um, in the first place. So the use of filters is one thing. Um, a second possibility is, is to use, it's also a part of optical staining, and that is called phase contrast microscopy. Now phase contrast was invented um, yeah, several uh, decades ago um, and uh, yeah, it was basically also awarded with a Nobel Prize in Physics and it, phase contrast microscopy was ex extremely important um, in uncovering the details of living cells without the need of adding chemicals for staining. Um, because uh, phase contrast microscopy really opened up the world um, you know, to, to living cells and you could now see things that were completely invisible. And what phase contrast does is it, it allows you to see structures that are transparent um, but have a different so-called refractive index. Um, and the optics convert now different refractive indexes um, of the specimen into different brightness. So it artificially makes some structures brighter and other structures darker. So of course you're losing the natural appearance of the specimen this way, but at least you're able to see structures that you were not able to see before. And for this reason, phase contrast microscopy is, is a classical example would be if you want to observe bacteria under phase contrast um, under the microscope, then the bacteria which are transparent and which you otherwise would be very difficult to see um, in in yeah, in water um, become darker than the surrounding uh, water, and therefore you're able to see them darker even though um, they actually have the same um, yeah brightness um, as the surrounding because the optics changes differences in refractive index into different brightness. Um, yeah, again here a disadvantage is you're kind of losing the natural colors because bacteria in reality are not darker uh, than the surrounding. But that's exactly what we want. We want to see them, right? And so we're satisfied and happy by introducing um, yeah, differences in brightness uh, simply to make structures visible. And then another uh, way um, of increasing uh, contrast and introducing colors, and that's probably one of the things that the reader uh, or the viewer of my video was referring to, is, is how do I get this nice um, uh, bluish background? And in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm using polarized light to do that and a technique called DIC, um, which is again a different uh, way of optical staining um, because in polarized light what happens is, is that the different wavelengths of the light are cancelled away and uh, only certain wavelengths of colors um, are able to pass through and this also gives it um, yeah, different colors. So um, yeah, you can see that there are different ways of, of actually introducing those colors. Um, but um, yeah, which one is the best one? Which one is the correct one? Which one is the one that you should use? And I'm saying you cannot say that because different techniques um, indeed produce better or worse results with different specimens. So um, yeah, you just always have to experiment around a little bit and, and, and try out which technique is the one that is for my purposes um, yeah, working the best. Yeah, because not everything uh, always uh, results in very pleasing or very nice images if this is even that what you want. Because sometimes people don't care uh, whether the image looks nice and colorful. Just sometimes you just want to be able to see the things that you want to see. Um, and yeah, and the beauty or the aesthetic appeal might not be so relevant. Yeah. So what I'm saying here is, is the following, um, yeah, long answer to a simple or seemingly simple question. Um, it's a huge topic. Um, contrast and colors uh, in, in microscopy. But I hope uh, that in this video that I have given you a short uh, overview um, of what is possible. And indeed, I did make more detailed and specific videos about a variety of these topics. For example, the use of those um, filters here. Um, I've made several videos already on how you can make uh, those yourself. Um, yeah, so there is plenty, of course, uh, plenty to explore um, in the world of microscopy. I think for today, that's again enough. Uh, yeah, 
there is a comments section below. <laughs> and uh, of course, I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well if you like these type of videos. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.